In this video, I'm gonna be installing a Zena Home double curve shower rod into my bathroom. So originally I had shower doors in here and I ended up removing them. And I didn't wanna put them back in because I'm not very fond of shower doors. They tend to be very limiting on space for when you like wash your hair and raise your arms up. And I tend to hit my elbows into them quite often. So to give myself a little bit more space in the bathroom while showering, I bought a curved shower rod this will add an extra six inches of elbow space so that when you go to wash your hair, you're not gonna rack it into anything. And since it's a uh, curtain rod, if you end up hitting anything, you're just hitting the curtain and not an actual hard door. All right, so I laid out all my pieces to ensure I have everything I need to assemble this. And to start with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bracket B, which you can see on here there's a B right there and on the bottom and I'm going to assemble everything for bracket B and then once I have bracket B assembled I'm going to assemble bracket A and then we'll move back to the bathroom and put this up there and then mark our holes and go from there. So I have my B bracket, I need two threaded inserts, two mounting bracket screws, I need the two large hex wrenches that come supplied and then I need the two bars with the flat sides. So I have my bracket, all I'm gonna do is put the rod in here, line up the holes in the bracket, and then I'll drop my threaded insert in through the top, and then take my mounting screw through the bottom, and then screw them in. Now, the proper placement is to have the flat side of the shower rod here facing down. So you're gonna stare up at it when you're in the shower. So you're gonna be able to see this. Now, I have been asked before if you can have the flat side facing up, and you can, but you will have to flip everything for side A and side B if you do not want to see this. But the manufacturer says to have it facing down, so that's the way I'm going to do it because I don't mind seeing it. Now there is no difference between the two rods, so you don't have to worry about which one's on the front or the back side once you install them. Moving on to the assembly for side A, I'm just going to repeat everything basically that I did on side B. The only difference is, is that this rod is shaped to allow side B to go into it and we've got a flat edge right here and a plastic insert. So I just need to put this into the end of each of these. There we go. All right, and now I can attach them to the bracket of side A. Okay, both sides are now fully assembled. Side B, the flat side is pointed downward. So I'm going to just gently slide them in to side A. And we're just gonna collapse the bars inward a little bit so that I can get this into the bathroom easily. Now the instructions will tell you to put the end caps on um, and just leave them like right here on the bars. I'm not gonna do that because at this point we're gonna carry it in there. We're gonna put it up um, on the wall and we're gonna use the brackets now that everything's fully assembled to help mount or mark our final mounting location. So during this process, these are just gonna be dangling because I can't have them covering the holes and they're just gonna be bouncing around here on the bars. Um, that's gonna be really annoying. So I'm gonna leave them off for now and then when I'm done to fully assemble and put it in place, I'll put the end caps on. But for now, we're just gonna leave them off. All right, with the rod assembled, what you wanna do is bring it into the bathroom, extend it until it's touching both walls and then at that point you will want to add your set screws which goes right here and using the small hex head wrench that's provided we're just going to screw these into place now if you don't want to see the set screws you could flip the entire assembly upside down so that the flat side of the bar for side b is facing upward and then the set screw hole on side a is also facing upward all right, now that would make it a little more difficult to put them in because you're gonna have to get up on the ladder, um, but it's, it's preference, honestly. The instructions say to have them facing down, but if you don't wanna see them, you could flip the whole thing upside down. It's not gonna cause any issues with the bar and you could have it that way. It might cause issues though with your 
um, with your curtains. So however you are hanging the curtains on here, you know, as you slide them left and right, it could get caught on this area. I don't know, I've never done it that way, but that could be potentially an issue. So with the bar touching both walls and the set screws in, you can now tighten down the bar so it adds a little more tension, so it will hold itself in place just by twisting on these. So I've already got this fully tightened and it is, it is snug. So this is a tension fit currently on the wall. I do not want to leave it as a tension. I want to do a permanent installation with screws. So um, what I need to get is my final location. And in this case, this is not where I want it to be. So before I go into explaining how I got my final location determined, I'm gonna get the bar out of the way. So I'm just gonna loosen these, take the tension off the bone, and then should gain enough space here to get it out. There we go. So for determining how high you want your shower rod to be, that's gonna be based off of how large of a shower curtain you wanna put up. So I wanna do a seven foot tall curtain because I have nine foot ceilings in my bathroom. And so I want that taller curtain to kind of emphasize just how tall my bathroom ceilings are and make it really seem like it's a very large shower even though it's still just a normal size shower, it just has really tall curtains. Now, the general rule of thumb is that for no matter how long your curtain is, you want it to extend into the tub by about six inches. This will ensure that even if the curtain is kind of flapping around due to airflow or anything, you're not going to have any water get, escape from the tub and get past the curtain. So if my shower curtain is going to be seven feet long and I want to go into the tub six inches, then I need to account for that as far as where the final placement is. So with a seven foot curtain, six inches into the tub, then I don't want it to obviously rest all the way into the tub, essentially touching the ground. So I want to bring my rod up an extra six inches. So instead of putting it at seven feet, because that would drag the, the end of the curtain onto the floor, I want to bring it up to seven and a half feet. If you're going to do a six foot long curtain and you want six inches in the tub, then bring it up to six and a half feet. And same thing if you're doing a five, bring it up to five and a half feet. So that's how I determined the overall height of the shower rod. Now, what did I do to determine where I want it placed as far as essentially depth for the shower? Now, what I did is since I'm using a double rod, the advantage of using a double rod is that the inner rod on the inside of the shower is gonna have your actual curtain for water. And then your outer rod is more of a decorative curtain so you can put anything you want on there. You don't have to worry about it getting dirty and going bad over time or if it does start to go bad, it'll take a lot longer because it's not in direct contact with water. Well, I want that outer curtain to fall right here on the edge of the tub. If I push the rod too far out, it's going to hang out into the bathroom and it's going to dangle and there's going to be a bunch of space between it and the tub. So I've set it so that its location is going to be basically aligned where that outer rod falls right on the edge of the tub. All right, my shower curtain rod is in its final position, so I've gone ahead and tension mounted it there and now I've marked my holes and I'm gonna have to take this down, drill those holes, insert mollies most likely because I doubt I'll hit a stud and then I'll be able to attach the brackets to the wall. Now, if you don't wanna do a permanent install like I'm doing, then essentially at this point, you would be done because this is the location you want it. It's just you would need to have those end caps on and then you would be able to cover up the brackets and essentially be good to go. But for me, I'm gonna take this back down and put those holes in the wall so I can insert my mollies. I'm gonna start by drilling a small hole and this is really just to see if I do end up hitting a stud, that way I don't waste uh, drilling a bigger hole for a molly, which the screw is not gonna be able to go into. Um, so if I do hit a stud, then I can just do screws. And if not, I just come back and drill for mollies. So I did end up hitting one stud on the front one over on the opposite side, but all the rest of them will require molly. So I need the drill with a quarter inch drill bit so that the molly will fit. So the current rod is fully up, but I wanna address two things first. One, you'll notice that I did not put it on the center line. So center line of the bracket is not on the original center line where I wanted it to be as far as my mark on the wall. 
And the reason for that was, is that um, if I shifted it out here, then the outside curtain rod would have ended up putting that shower curtain very close to the, the toilet over here. And so it would have felt like if you were on the toilet and the curtain was closed, it would have been like encroaching on your space. So I shifted it back a bit, but I didn't want to go any farther than that because then I would have essentially been losing space in the shower from the inside curtain. So right now they should fall where the inside curtain is essentially right on the edge of the inside of the tub. And the outer one will probably be with the curtain maybe three inches from the tub, but that's okay. So this is a six inch curved shower rod from Zena. Now they do have like 12 inch curved rods and you might be looking at the prices and think, oh, well, 12 inches would give me way more space, so I'd rather have the 12 or the 6. But if you're in a situation like mine where you have a cabinet right next to your shower, a 12 inch may not work. So initially, I did consider a 12 inch for those very reasons, but then I started to measure, and I really determined that 12 inches was going to end up where I might have had the cabinet interfering with the rod. And so it wasn't going to work in my bathroom, so I went with the 6 to play it safe. Now, if you don't have a cabinet over the toilet, like in my bathroom, and you don't have to worry about that, then sure, go with the 12. But if you're in a situation like mine, you might want to play it safe and go with less curve and make sure you're not going to have it interfere. The instructions want you to, once you mark your locations for your holes, to take it down and then come back and basically put one side up at a time. I found that to be really annoying. Um, I think personally it would be a lot easier if you just took the rods off of the brackets and then we're just dealing with the bracket mount the bracket to their respective walls and then come back and assemble the rods once the brackets are up. That's gonna be a lot easier than trying to fight the, the rods bouncing around, moving around on you, and they get in the way when you're trying to uh, get the screws into the brackets. All right guys, that concludes how to install a double curve shower rod. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave some comments down below if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time on the DIY Garage.